This is Ron Palooba to Fran Systems, and I welcome you to AIRS, Sexually Transmitted Infection Referral and Treatment. Before we start making STI referrals, let's review these five important concepts. Number one, agencies contracted to do STI referral and treatment must have their referral libraries populated with their referral service providers and are mapped for this specific STI referral in AIRS. The only exception would be agencies providing STI services under the umbrella of HIV counseling, testing, and referrals. These agencies will record the service as a normal CTR encounter and service. If an agency has any questions about its contract or the mapping of its services, it should contact its contract manager before proceeding. Number two, clients for referral must already have complete intakes entered into errors. Number three, Referrals for screening and treatment can be done after intervention delivered to individuals, or IDI, or interventions delivered to groups have been delivered to the client. Number four, referrals for treatment can be entered only after STI screening has been entered under primary care and results have been received. Number five, Ideal referral is for specific screenings, but a general screening can also be done. To enter a STI referral via the service encounter screen for an individual client, we would go in, enter our encounter. Here you can see we have the date, funding program, service category, encounter type, staff person site, our various services provided. And then to enter our encounter, we would come down here to referral provided, right click our mouse, add referral provided, select our category, STI screening, testing, and treatment, and then the appropriate service. So if we click here on service, you'll see here we have all of the uh, various uh, screenings for STIs, including STI screening for STDs in general. Again, an ideal referral is for a specific screening, but general screenings can also be entered. Moving on to referral information, here we can identify the referred to agency. So if we click on referred to, you know, this will pull up the agency referral library, so we can select the referred to agency. Appointment date. Agencies must enter the appointment date of referral, so we can either key it in on the keyboard or by clicking appointment date. We can enter the appointment date. Because STD confidentiality law prohibits the referring agency from calling the referred to agency. In order to verify if the appointment was kept, referring agencies should encourage clients to provide this information to them voluntarily. This is different from HIV testing where the agency can follow up. It should be noted with proper consent forms from the Department of Health and signed by the client, the results of the STI screening can be obtained by the referring agency. Next, we come to our referral follow-up method. So this is where we would identify how the referral is being followed up on in order to get the verification component of the referral. So here we have active referral, uh, passive referral with 
agency verification, uh, passive referral with client verification. Again, proper consent forms from the Department of Health signed by the client are necessary for the referring agency to obtain the results of the STI screening from the referred to agency. If the referral verification component of the referral is known at this point, we can certainly enter it in. Click on the date verified and then also the verification status. Once we click done, you'll see that the referral provided will appear down here in the referrals provided box. It's important to know each screening does require a separate referral. If a client is referred for multiple STIs, we can certainly then just go back into the box and add them all in separately. And then you'll see that they would appear here in the referrals provided box. Once the encounter with the referrals has been saved, you can always use referral tracking here within historical information to make any updates to a referral. So here, if we wanted to enter the verification component, we can highlight the uh, referral here in the grid, click on edit, now we can go through and enter the referral status and click Save. In situations where the client does not self-report their results and the proper signed consent forms have not been obtained, Loss to follow-up must be used for the referral status to complete the referral. A report is available from AIRS that will help agencies monitor missing referral statuses for referrals so that they can be updated. You should check with your contract manager regarding how long you should wait before marking a client as lost to follow-up. Any agency performing their own STI screenings should record those screenings as well as the results in the laboratory and psychological test section within historical information. As mentioned previously, we can also document our referrals for sexually transmitted infections uh, here in our group encounters are IDGs, interventions delivered to groups. Here you can see our saved group uh, encounter. We have the encounter form. We have our date of the encounter, program, service category, the encounter type, staff, site, uh, services, activities provided. If we then navigate over to the attendees tab, here we'll see our list of clients, uh, those that have the little checkbox under attended being the ones who attended our IDG or group activity. We can then right click over the individual clients names, click on referrals. And from here we can then click on add and proceed with the data entry of our referrals. go through, enter the name of the referred to agency, the important appointment date, and also our follow-up method. Following which, click on Save.
Partner notification is an important discussion to have with clients with positive results. Agency is responsible for reporting cases to city or state. Here you can see the referral for partner notification. We have the category 970 along with the service 10 program assisted notification. Important reports uh, regarding referral data that can be used to assist with follow-up include the client agency referral report, Here, this report allows us to uh, run the report for a particular program, uh, run the report for a particular worker. Also, the referred to agency. If we navigate over to the Output tab, then click on Preview and Proceed. And here we have the client agency referral report. So we can see at the top we have our date range. And we've got the name of the referred to agency, name of the client referred, date of the referral, date verified, appointment date, referring worker, referral category, and then the referral status. The other report found under Aggregate Reports, AIDS Institute Aggregate Reports. Here we would select our selection options, site, agency, contract, program, as well as our date range. And moving over to the Output tab, you'll see Summary of referrals, showing the service category, service, as well as the status. The ERA STI report will show all STI referrals, which is STI referrals done under the STI initiative and under HIV counseling, testing, and referral, CTR. Before we close, some final thoughts. Enter all screening and testing results into the laboratory section of AIRS. Due to confidentiality laws, agencies must strongly encourage clients to sign release forms or self-report STI test results. Each referral must be followed up from beginning to end. Even if a referral result has been lost to follow up, it still needs to be recorded into errors. Closing the loop on all referrals is essential. Partner services and notification must be performed for positive results. Talk to your contract manager about how you should submit the summary of referrals report to the AIDS Institute. Thank you for joining us on this online video tutorial on STI referrals and treatment. For more information, please contact Ron Massaroni at the AIDS Institute Prevention Division.